Welcome to Nintendo Voice Chat, IGN's Nintendo Podcast. My name is Philip Mewson, and today I am joined by Per Schneider, Philip, Brian Altano, Bruh. and Casey DeFritas. Hello. That's fine. <laughs> Welcome. That. No catchphrase. That's cool. <laughs> Great to have my, you guys My catchphrase here. is not Philip either. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Welcome back to NVC live on IGN.com every Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time where you can watch us first. And then on Fridays, we upload on YouTube at 3 p.m. So make sure you come and check us out on IGN if you want to catch the episode a day early. Nice. Because we have a lot of stuff going on in today's episode. I'm very excited. There's, of course, a ton of Nintendo news to go over. There's a new Pit Cross game <laughs> coming out. It's going to be the a, entire show, it's which a is crazy. 42 minute segment. Yes, <laughs> we've blocked up 45 minutes just for Pit Cross. Mm -hmm. um, so get ready. No, just kidding. Of course, uh, Nintendo <laughs> is back in the news. They've been throwing down the ban hammer or the uh, legal hammer, I guess I should say. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we're getting some new GameCube Switch controllers from Hori. We're going to take a look at that as well as as well as some new Joy Cons as well. So that should be pretty interesting. Uh, there's some controversy with the Pokemon director's recent interview with Famitsu. A little bit of a misquote, but Casey and I are going to go ahead and run over that for you and hopefully shed some light on it. And then as well as um, some new game releases, some big ones. Uh, one in Europe this week, WarioWare Gold. I'm super excited about it. Um, and then, of course, in the second half of the episode, we have special guests coming from Nykalis to talk about Code Princess EX and Blade Strangers. So make sure you stick around for that. But before we get there, let's go ahead and come back straight to the top of the show and talk about this amazing game that is coming out hopefully soon hopefully monday uh <laughs> we're still I, trying to figure out if it's a worldwide release or if it's just a uh, eastern release i totally weaseled this topic into the uh, <laughs> into say. the run of show it, it says pick cross 97 I'm the only times one who cares about pick cross right? of all there's <laughs> millions of switches out there it's like one of the best selling consoles there's tons of new games hitting every single week pick cross is it and then there's, well, there's Picross. You've it, mentioned Picross pair every show I've been on with yeah, you. Yeah, it's my Monster Hunter. So, yeah. It's, it's so basically it's totally the same fine. as Monster Hunter. No, it's a great puzzle game oh, with numbers, oh, which means oh, uh, oh. everybody, yeah, there was a Bye sighting. Zach. Bye, Zach. Big, Bigfoot. A quick little cameo. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we talked about a little bit last uh, last week about Picross and how I love this game for traveling, and then there hasn't been a new one. And boom, of course, minutes later, uh, Jupiter, the Japanese company that has worked on you know Zelda, Pokemon, Picross with Nintendo, mm -hmm. uh, announced their title coming out only for Japan at that point, but actually it looks like it's coming uh, uh, out everywhere mm -hmm. on August 2nd for just uh, $8.99. Oh, man. Wow. It, you get That's so many hours easy. out of that. You have no arrives. excuse. You have to buy it. Yes. <laughs> and I, I was thinking maybe I have to go back to my 3DS and download Hello Kitty Sanrio Picross to fill the gap. That's true. But uh, now, thank you. So it's like the thing with you where it doesn't matter what's on there. You just want the no, Picross. I'll play it. Even yeah. Hello Kitty Sanrio. Yeah, and it's weird that it's still fresh. It's number puzzles. Can you, yeah, can you clarify what kind of a game is? Is it puzzles? Is it number puzzles? Is it just numbers? Is it like because I'm very you're afraid of math. You you have you have a grid <laughs> and it says numbers on the side, and you you have to kind of figure out where the pixel blocks lie based on the numbers and how they yeah. intersect. It okay. sounds like math, and it's actually once you get a hang of it, it's pretty easy. Okay, and it gets really really difficult, and then a picture comes out in the end. And this game uh, introduces uh, introduces a new mode where you uncover a piece of a picture and you build these kind of like bigger pictures and I'm, I'm like making fun of pair but yep. I'm I was so actually good. totally hooked on Picross on yep. Switch and on 3DS uh, if you had Club Nintendo back in the day you might have gotten the Twilight Princess one for 3DS right. it's mm -hmm. like one of the first freebies they gave away um, and yeah you basically have vertical columns and you create this gridded out picture uh, and this goes all the way back to I believe was it the NES was one of the first games. Picross really old. Yeah, yeah it's been and, around for um, a long time. It had Nintendo characters originally. Yeah. What kind of stinks about this one is that it's just sort of generic pictures. So it's like a mm. guy at the beach or like an ostrich or something, which are great in theory. I mean, ostriches are cool. It's at least the top five. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping there are a lot of uh, ostriches. But it's like a giraffe and a bird at the same time. Yeah. That is a great animal. I've never played it before, but I'm so Play enticed it. by Pear's passion for it that I think this is going to be the one. Yeah. This is where I'm jumping in. Yeah, That's hopefully true. it's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had no idea there was a Twilight Princess one, though. Yeah. yeah there was a Pokemon really cool. one, too. Yeah, there was, mm -hmm. there's a bunch of ones. Ooh, there's yep. a bunch. And a Sanrio one there's on a whole, 3DS. There's a whole backlog there yep. for you. Um, cool. So that's exciting news. For but, some. Yes. Uh, and some not so exciting news for Nintendo, uh, but still very relevant and interesting, is, uh, yeah, Nintendo has started issuing lawsuits to multiple emulator sites, uh, which is, you know, nothing new from Nintendo. They've done this before. Uh, actually, a few years ago, Nintendo took down a very famous emulator site called 
EMU or EMU Paradise. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've never been there. I don't. I don't download illegal ROMs. I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the subjects in question uh, for this lawsuit are Love Retro and Love ROMs, and they're being told, <laughs> or they have That's been not told, an emulator side. I don't, it's a ROM side. It's easy to remember. Love remember. ROMs. Yeah. Love Retro. Yeah. Love ROMs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, they've been told to uh, take down all of their Nintendo di Nintendo titles from their servers uh, and pay a statutory damages rate of around one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Per Nintendo title, so that's a lot more money than the uh, Virtual Console yeah, that's for insane. the for each game. To be fair, that site has at least six Google ads on it, and they're going to make <laughs> probably seventy bucks this month. That's, so they're getting close. Well, you know to what's it off. what's interesting about this website too, um, and I think that this is probably more of a problem for Nintendo is that a lot of their website was actually using Nintendo art, like it looked like a Mario oh. level. Uh, yeah, uh, and Nintendo be doing that. really doesn't I like that. I don't understand yeah. how these sites can be up for that long. I mean, just bring it back to to any other media. If you took every alien movie, uploaded them to a site, and called it Alien Paradise, and said, <laughs> watch these alien movies for free, and hear my Google ads, how long do you think that would be up? Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Like a week? <sighs> well, or, yeah. Or, no, I'm, I, I totally get it. I mean... Uh, to play devil's advocate here, there is that sort of justification that you are allowed to own legal backups of yes. of your stuff. How you obtain those is sort of nebulous. But but it's um, but it, but it's not entirely true. Yes. That's like that's like saying I I own the alien movie and therefore I can make a copy of it and I can then upload it to a website. Like I think that's the the so owning the legal copy thing for backup reasons is so this kind of wishy washy reason. I think mm -hmm. the thing here is like so if I own a Pokemon game, mm -hmm. I can also have it exist on a ROM, and that is legal for me to own on a ROM as long as I also own the Pokemon game. That's how I understood it. So it's, I'm not allowed to distribute it. It's you true. You have to create your own ROM, though? That's the thing. Yeah, I think... I, that's I what's think nebulous that, about well, no, it. Here's, yeah. here's the thing. It's is legality of obtaining the ROM in the first place. You're, you're allowed to, like, you know, rip your, your games onto a computer, and you're allowed mm -hmm. to have them there. But what... Um, publishers or developers like Nintendo really don't like uh, is BIOS. Like that's the issue because you need to you can create your own software to sort of run those games on there. But if you're using BIOS, especially like pieces of Nintendo's code, mm -hmm. that's when they get mad. Mm -hmm. That's when they'll start issuing the DCMAs. It's so. it's, a, it's a gray area. The, the the defense is yes, I already own this product, therefore I can own a copy. In reality, that is disputed, and that's what the the publishers go up against all the time, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like they say, you don't need to back up our game because it's secure on the cartridge and if something happens with the cartridge you come to us and you know we talk about fixing it like mm -hmm. there's no reason for you to create a copy it's the same with you know music sheets like if you have music uh, sheets that you bought if you make a photocopy you can say well I'm just making it easier for myself I don't have to flip through the book in reality Everything says don't cop, right? Yeah. Right, and so, but it's hard to enforce, and like the game publishers would be stupid to try to enforce you backing up something. Yeah, or, it was like there was know? like I think it was like Beyonce fell down or something, and she mm -hmm. was like, take all those pictures down from the internet, and they're like, that doesn't you can't that doesn't work like that. Like we're actually going to double them now because you told us to stop. I think that's a little different, but yeah. well, yeah. you know, but and so so I think the thing that gets weird with this is that a lot of their games, and this is not to justify piracy, <laughs> but a lot of their games are basically impossible. Some, not a lot, but several of their games are basically impossible to play in 2018. Yeah, on current platforms yep. or even you know even like retro platforms, it's it's very hard to hunt certain things down, and that sucks, right? Yeah, and yeah. so like from an archivist perspective, I think that there is a value to hosting these things somewhere. That said, once you start profiting off of them, I can see where legal you know legal steps come in. So it, there, there it's is. difficult. No, you know? they, they they were totally profiting on on them. Uh, both of those websites were getting 17 million view, uh, visitors each month and they wow. were making ad revenue off mm. of that uh, you know through their website ads and mm -hmm. stuff so subsequently uh, they were both shut down yeah. Uh, yeah. both of those sites are not up anymore it's just happened a couple days ago do you think they'll, Nintendo will actually continue to pursue them for the 2 million for no. each trademark no I think it was more a scare tactic <laughs> nobody ever yeah. that was that. like okay. when like Napster sued like this old lady once for <laughs> all the CD like the albums yep. and she they, they, it was like $25,000 a song 
Yeah. And she yeah. was like, I have no money. No, that, that's <laughs> the saber rattling part of it, right? Like, that's to scare people into yeah. and, and that's why this is so Shutting public, down, is, yeah. so that everybody knows. Look, mm-hmm. I, 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 I love the concept of preservation. There are a lot of people who are mm-hmm. engaged in preservation trying to back up games so that they, if they ever, they're ever out of print, there's a copy of them, right? Like, yeah. That's different, though, from making that then available yeah. for download right. on a website and serving ads on it. So, wasn't there a controversy about Nintendo putting up a copy of a ROM on Virtual Console? Console? Like, didn't that happen? Where they took a ROM? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I heard about that. I think it was. I think it was, it was uh, a Super Mar- Mario Brothers. Yeah. No. Um. Yeah. So that mm. this was on the Wii U. So, and I think it was just last year. It was in early 2017. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were having trouble finding the source file yeah. of one of their own games. Yeah. So they went to an emulator website, downloaded the Super Mario Brothers or Super Mario World uh, <laughs> ROM, and then uploaded it to Virtual Console and sold it to all of us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, technically, they own yeah. it. It's yeah. theirs, but yeah. still, it's amazing. That, that that's why archivism, that like, you know, yeah. that's why it's important that there are museums and archives and people who are do curating this content. Right. And, you know, we've had our friends like Stephen Lynn were on the show. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what they work on, but they're not putting everything up for sale. Yeah, and, exactly. That's I mean, difference. there are so non right. so can I mean, you can argue that Nintendo doesn't suffer damages if something that's out of print and nobody plays mm-hmm. is being downloaded, but the no, reality but I mean, is it is their, it is their property. Is yeah, and the, the other property. elephant yeah. in the room is that Nintendo is not currently selling these games on their platform that is making, that is selling millions of units. Mm-hmm. So, like, you <laughs> you steal something, you shouldn't steal things. I'll Stealing say that. Stealing is bad. Stealing is bad. <laughs> Don't steal. I mean, but if you've bought Super it's, Mario yeah. Brothers seventy-two times in right. your life, <laughs> but if like <laughs> say you want to play, you want to play a game, and you reach for your Switch and it's not there, and you reach for your 3DS and it's not there, and you're like, I tried to be a good person today. <laughs> now it's time to steal. <laughs> At but least just, I tried. I know, it happens. You know, it just it kind of happens. What if you steal from rich and give to poor players? Is that like, like a Robin same? Hood? Yeah, yeah, like a like a like a ramen hood. No. I, yeah. Yeah. Ramen hood. Yeah. Yeah. I don't Nintendo didn't yeah. develop Robin Hood for okay. NES. That was I think it was a third party. It's probably LJN or one of those. <laughs> anyway, all right, all right. It sucks if this happens to kids who don't know any better, but mm-hmm. you know, like the the websites do know better. Don't, don't rip off stuff. You know what, Nintendo? Just release, you know, a nice classic virtual console style Netflix system on Switch, and I think we'll all be happy with that. Mm-hmm. I think that would yeah, be really like cool. Yeah, or like standalone micro console. Or just a yeah. standalone, yeah, call it the oh. virtual console. I think that <laughs> would be really cool. This is a tough one. It's a very it's a very tricky conversation. Exactly. All right, well, let's keep on moving forward. We don't have too much time, so we got to make sure we're on track here. Uh, Hori is, has just recently announced new GameCube Switch controllers, which is very cool if you're excited about Smash Brothers uh, and you aren't going to get the official Nintendo one. I don't mm-hmm. know why you wouldn't. But these are really cool because they're themed after Mario, Zelda, and Pikachu, and they're releasing in October. Here's a picture of it if you're watching the video portion of the podcast. I love the Zelda one. I love the Zelda mm-hmm. one, too. It's Mario's really cool. red, Zelda is black with the Hyrule crest, and Pikachu is yellow with a little black Pikachu mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. silhouette on it. What's cool about these two is you're not going to need any sort of like adapter, GameCube controller adapter. They are USB, so they can plug right into oh. the Switch's dock. Uh, and you can reassign the LR, uh, the LNR, and the ZL and ZR buttons as well. Right. So. That's nice. They look yeah. like they have some additional buttons too. Is that yeah. like the capture button oh, and the home button and stuff? Yeah. yeah. There's a there's a home button, a capture button, and I think there's a turbo button right in the middle. Cheaters. Yeah, which is <laughs> not going to work for competitive Smash. Um, but uh, you take the shape that. is very similar to the classic GameCube controller. And, it is. and Hori uh, makes quality products. Yeah. Like good, it, the plastic and everything feels good, the material. Yeah. Uh, and the um, we haven't heard what the final, the length of the cords were, but they, they're, I heard they were based on uh, on their last iteration, which had ample. Yeah. They're not yeah. Japanese living room like shorter cords. They're they not NES actually, classic. No. Long or the cords. original yeah. GameCube controller yeah. cords. But then it's USB yeah. too, so you can always extend it easily. Yep, mm-hmm. and they're only uh, they're only about twenty seven dollars, so that's not a bad price. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. So nope. we'll- no rumble, presumably. Uh, didn't say anything about rumble. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm assuming there there should be rumble, mm-hmm. but Who these knows? next these other Hori controllers here that we have uh, actual Hori Joy Cons that we got sent to us yesterday uh, do not have rumble. They're not wireless, but they are pretty. They don't have motion. Yeah, but they're very pretty. They don't and they have f- shoulder buttons. They don't. Like, no. Yeah. But uh, no, they have D pads. 
Which is really cool. They do. Yeah, you do not have to mod your D-pad uh, or your own Joy-Con and create your own D-pad mod anymore starting in September because mm -hmm. Hori is officially releasing these in the West. I know that they were initially announced for Japan only, but they are bringing them to the West in September. Uh, and we've been playing around with them. I think for the most part, we both agree that we like them. We like the way they feel, but we're a little disappointed with you know how many features are missing here that yeah. are so critical. But to they are switch. like half the price. Yeah, budget. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I will say, like right out the gate, um, when I first read about these, they were blue and they were Japanese only, and now I believe the ones coming to America are they're uh, themed are themed after Mario and Zelda, which means that they worked with Nintendo in some capacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they're get officially things, licensed. Yeah, to get them licensed. Yes. Which I find that so strange that Nintendo. Launch Joy Cons without D pads, which you know I understand because they want you know to have multiplayer that splits off and to have sort of like you know symmetrical play when it comes to each person having a controller. Um, these don't work too well when you play video games with them sideways. You know, look at the sideways Joy Con thing. But it's really <laughs> surprising to see them put Mario and Zelda stuff on these. So I'm holding. If you're watching the video now, I'm I'm holding the red one um, with Mario themed on it. I'm also holding up a white Joy Con that I modded myself. And I've been playing Dead Cells and a bunch of other 2D platforming games um, significantly on these. And uh, I spent a bunch of time with both last night to kind of go back and forth mm -hmm. between which ones I like. And the result is I love them both. Yeah, which. Kind of sucks to say, but if you don't feel like unscrewing your Joy Cons and potentially, you know, breaking them or anything like that, you can get these for twenty five bucks. The difference is, you can't get a right one that will match it. Which, That's so which so stupid to me. Or would drives a lot of people crazy. I right. totally understand. I mean, that. Yeah. look at it, right? Even you have a, yeah. you have a themed Zelda edition jo left Joy Con, yep. and you don't have a matching right one. And yeah. the and the black or gray on the Zelda Joy Con doesn't match the gray yeah. of the regular Nintendo Switch exactly. Joy Con either. Yeah. They're also slightly translucent mm -hmm. too. Yeah, they're so. missing um, wireless functionality. They're missing rumble of any kind, not even no HD buttons. rumble. No buttons. Gyro. And there's no yeah, no gyro. And there's no uh, there's no shoulder buttons. Well, yeah, because you can't remotely play them at all. Yeah. 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 So um, you can only use these things locked into handheld mode. Yeah. yeah. That's it. So and these are really for people who have a pro controller at home that they exclusively correct. play when docked and then mm -hmm. are only going to be playing a single player game when on the go. It's, yeah, it's basically true. if you want to play Luminous. Like I don't <laughs> like playing Luminous cross. with uh, the left uh, deep, the, the D-pad buttons mm -hmm. when on the go. Like it doesn't feel right to me. And that game does not support the yeah. analog stick. Um, right? I will say mm -hmm. that the I really like the shoulder buttons on them. They're they very click clicky. very quick. Yeah. I like everything about the feel and the concept. I don't love. I don't love it in practice. Yes. Like I think it's confusing to consumers to buy something mm -hmm. that and comes it, with all these caveats for yeah. a machine that was designed to be portable and docked. Definitely. And then it does eat more battery too, doesn't it? Well, it doesn't have its own dedicated Ooh, battery. See? So it's actually yeah. it's eating into the switch's battery mm. life itself. And it will drain your Switch's battery faster, even when it's in sleep mode, which is weird. I, I, Yeah, I didn't play my Switch at all today. It's it's 3 o'clock, uh, and currently, I started the day with 100%, didn't play it, just left it in sleep mode, and now I'm at 75%. Hmm. Okay, you know what? I had noticed that last night, too, because I looked down at my Switch, and yeah. it was like 33%, and I was like, I've been playing 2D games. So yeah. it's like it comes with more rules than a pack of Gremlins, right? Like, That's you really got to think about whether you want this. The good news about the D-pad is it is a more traditional kind of, like, it's like the seesaw construction that you don't get with the modded ones. With mm -hmm. the modded ones, you can push down on your D-pad, mm -hmm. and then it'll hit all buttons at the same time, and that doesn't happen with this. I, yeah. I wonder yeah. how many parents are going to go and see these and buy yep. them without reading all the caveats mm -hmm. and bring them home and have their kid be upset that it doesn't work the way all of the other toys it does work. it does yeah. on the box say right. handheld mode only okay. in like a red so circle at least there's that so yeah it's kind of small though yeah, yeah. like shoved off Still in the bad. corners I, I feel like yeah. it's one of those things like when i worked at a game store i would have been like by the way yeah, yeah. i love horror <laughs> so you but know. this is uh this yeah. is uh, trouble yeah 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 all right well uh we have a little bit more time here before we're going to jump into the leading games. So let's go ahead and move over to the uh, Pokemon director's controversial quote on catching Pokemon. Now, Casey, I feel like you can probably okay. sum this up a lot faster than I can. Um, so go ahead and take it. So uh, basically, um, Junichi Masada from Pokemon, he's been working on the Pokemon game since Red and Blue, had a very long in-depth interview with Fumitsu, which is a Japanese magazine. Mm -hmm. um, there's been no official translation, but Nintendo Everything and a few other websites uh, translated it. 
Right. Um, so one website published an article with the title Junichi Masada Cohen capturing Pokemon was too difficult for some players, which is one of the changes in Let's Go with no context. So people mm -hmm. latched on to Masada said catching Pokemon is too hard and then got really angry <gasps> about it. <Yeah. laughs> like, how could he say that? That's yeah, not yeah, yeah. hard. That's so easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is the director of the Pokemon series. Yeah. So he's yeah. been working on it for a very long time. Right. But if you actually read the entire transcript, if you put it into context, mm -hmm. it doesn't sound inflammatory at all. He's comparing that mechanic to the new mechanic in Let's Go, which is when comparedly, obviously a lot easier. Throwing a Pokeball without having to fight the Pokemon is easier than the classic yeah. method. Right, right, right. So if you read the whole quote, he said, there was considerable debate within the team concerning the absence of wild Pokemon battles. Up until this point, I had been steadfast in defending the mechanic as the series director. This time, though, I felt like we should try to change things up a bit. Personally, I've always felt that the weakening and capturing mechanic is a bit like fishing, but there are some people that aren't fans of that kind of strategy. To that end, as I mentioned before, I wanted to make these games more enjoyable for a wider, wider audience of fans. As such, we simplified the mechanics. Until now, catching Pokemon has been vaguely reminiscent of fishing, whereas I'd liken the new mechanic to catching bugs with a net. I have to wonder if people will enjoy that sort of straightforward mechanic more so than the previous mechanic. Mm -hmm. So if you right. read that in context, he's comparing the two mechanics and it has been agreed that he did say, like, Pear, you read the Japanese. Mm -hmm. It does say difficult somewhere in there. This particular translation kind of tried to add in nuance. Yeah. I thought he was I thought he was respectful too with yeah. his company. He just he said mm -hmm. some people felt this way, right? Yeah. And like right. He, he's not He's not trying to excuse it, and yeah. he's basically leaving it as, hey, this is what we want to try. Yeah. Um, Which I, makes sense, because they're mm -hmm. trying to bring in that Pokemon Go audience, yeah. you know? and It's just when separated, and that's the only thing included from the entire quote, it sounds a yeah. little bit inflammatory. Right. But that's yeah. not, there's a lot more to that story than just yeah. that one sentence. Yeah. <laughs> I think the, the real offensive part was at the end when he said, I hate these wretched animals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only here for the money, which I think it was just really, really mean. Okay. Don't quote us on that, please. No, it's, not true. it's not true. <laughs> Don't source that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how this works out. Yeah. You know, I'm, I enjoyed the capture mechanic in the original games, and I like the 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 kind of like the the worry about mm -hmm. like oh. I I made the Pokemon faint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kill right. Yeah. And and like messing up <laughs> when catching and like sometimes getting them right down to just having a little bit of HP. Like mm -hmm. that that was interesting. Mm -hmm. But I've also played all those games yeah. before, mm -hmm. and so I'm I'm okay with yeah. it being different. Mm -hmm. And I did like the capture mechanic with a Pokeball that I played yeah. at E3. So exactly, yeah, it was fun. Let's and see how it works out. If you hate it, it doesn't matter because there's a core classic game with all the classic mechanics intact coming out in 2019. Yep. So there yeah. you go. Please be excited. <laughs> Get hyped. All right, so let's go ahead and jump over to our leading games, and we're going to kick it off with our pick of the week this week. And our pick of the week is Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1. Probably not two, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Brian, you've been playing a ton, or a little bit, I Yeah, I played say. a bunch last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Mega Man with 1. With my uh, new Hori D-pad, which uh, is a match made in heaven. Yeah, what'd you think? Uh, I like these games a lot. I think that um, they... Weirdly, in some ways, they've aged better, and in other ways, they've aged worse than the NES games. Mm -hmm. um, I think that they're really ambitious for Super Nintendo games at the time, um, and they do a lot of really interesting things to sort of change up the Mega Man formula if, you've only, if you're only really used to the NES games. This is basically a collection of all the X games. Um, they all play really well nowadays, uh, even though they're, you know, I, I don't think these games hold up as well as, say, like something like Link to the Past or Super right, Mario World, right. right? When you're yep. really going back into to the really legendary SNES games. I think these are very, very close, though. Uh, and they do a lot of really wonderful things. In terms of a collection, uh, it's all of the Super Nintendo X games and then a bunch of other features. You also have basically different filter options. Some of them kind of round off the edges on the pixels, which... Um, some people like, I personally like to play with like their original pixels. You can play with scan lines. You can change the uh, aspect ratio. Yeah. You can, you can add... play the Japanese versions too, right? Yeah, which is really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, things yeah. looked, when you go back to our old television sets, things looked a lot softer, right? Yeah. And so some people don't like that, yep. uh, like the hard edges. And what the developers did on the Super NES, they kind of, they picked adjacent colors to make things look rounder. So like a light blue, a slightly darker blue, and a really dark blue to make it look like a yep. round edge. And that's lost on the modern screens. It It'll look very yeah. pixely. And so you'll have the option of like a CRT filter. There's not really a ton of stuff there, but you can add borders and you can mm -hmm. sort of like 
um, shrink the screen or make it go fully widescreen, which affects the aspect ratio, ratio yep. and makes everything look stretched. It's not really the kind of don't filter rendering <laughs> options. Definitely don't do that. <laughs> that you'll see in like, say, your Neo Geo ACA games or anything like that. But there's a lot of cool stuff here. Um, on top of that, if you dig into the menus, there's tons of fantastic sort of digital archivist museum stuff here. Mm -hmm. I was geeking out last night because there is basically like 70 images and scanned box arts of Mega Man toys and action figures and Japanese capsule toys that were released during the era of the release of these games. So model kits, uh, like snap together kits, um, just little toys that you find in Japanese vending machines and stuff like that. Then there's also all the box art and, and concept art. There's full like FMVs from like animations that they did nice. for promotional material back then. There's uh, soundtrack stuff. So for the games, that's awesome. Um, for the museum aspect of it, it's even better. So I think it's like if you're a Mega Man fan and you really this was your era of Mega Man, mm -hmm. um, you you can't go wrong with this collection. Yep. Yep. Very cool. I believe it's twenty bucks. Yeah, yeah, twenty dollars. Yeah. Uh, you can buy them separately, and I think you can buy them together in a physical release. Yeah. So I'm not crazy, and I said this on podcast beyond as well. I'm not crazy about the way they've segmented the digital rollouts on these mm -hmm. games. Mm -hmm. um, they did the same thing with the NES ones, where like one through six are in one SKU basically, yeah. and then like nine and ten are in another one, and then they're doing the same with the X games here. Um, and I kind of wish you could just. Like if Take you them all, four, upload just, them to a ROM site? Yeah, just put them all <laughs> yeah, on I Love ROMs yeah, and then yeah. get sued. Um, <laughs> that's only, I think, $150 million okay. in damages. That's that's good. So no, um, It's worth it. Totally affordable. Totally, totally affordable. <laughs> yeah. All those Google clicks. Um, no, but I wish you could just take them all and just put them in one square. Because yeah. right now I have like four segmented squares of where all my Mega Man games are. And in lieu of Nintendo actually having folders or anything like that, you know, you're just, they're kind of all over the place. It'd be yep. nice to have one home for Mega Man on Switch. Yep. Hmm. But yeah. Yep. Go buy it. Can't that's, go wrong. Yeah, that's our pick of the week this week. $20 each digitally or $40 if you want to get them together. Um, highly recommend checking out the first collection. And if you really enjoy that, then grab the second one. Um, we have reviews on both of those as well. So I'll make sure to drop links in the description down below. So make sure you check that out. But another game that I think K Casey and I probably are the only ones who've played it so far. WarioWare? WarioWare Gold, Gold baby. <laughs> uh, it is out ah. now in Europe, releasing first in Europe and then out August 3rd uh, in everywhere else, I believe. But uh, yeah, it's amazing. We have another 3DS game, and this one's really good. It's yeah. really, really fun. I'm having such a blast with it. It's it's essentially a, an amazing nostalgic trip uh, through the entire history of Nintendo, essentially, through micro games. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you know, they're very different than what the actual games were. Um, like that was Excite Bike, if you're watching the video portion of the podcast. But it's the WarioWare that we all know and love uh, with over 300 micro games. Uh, some of them are returning. Uh, so you might have played a, a little bit of them from yep. like WarioWare Twisted. But they've all been like remade essentially. So they, right, like yeah. new graphics, new sound effects. Here's oh, a wow. Wind Waker mini game. Is that a Wind amazing? Waker one? Yeah. I know. Yeah. So Wind Waker is on 3DS <laughs> for five seconds. <laughs> so this is, I believe, the character that we're seeing right now is uh nine volt yeah mm -hmm. oh no, no, this, no. Is, this, this is, is a different volt. one so before yeah. with, with the wind waker 18. that was nine volt but there, anyway there's a new character called five volt right who is, wow. a, who is nine volts mom exactly who has a bunch of new uh Nint nostalgic yeah. nintendo <laughs> look at brian's face game. right now no, he's like, like blowing up I, I, I don't know <laughs> why I, we, we oh my god that's, yeah. this is awesome that's what i'm so talking about i'm i'm weirdly probably the biggest warrior wear fan in the office like I'm crazy for these games. Lily is not here today, but yeah, yeah. that's true. I yeah. like I've almost hundred percented all of these games, and for some stupid reason, because I'm a stubborn idiot and I put my 3ds like in a drawer somewhere, I kind of like stopped tracking this one. And then mm, I yeah. looked up the other day, same, and I was like, oh, it's it's here. Yeah, there's yeah. a new WarioWare uh -huh. game, and now I have to go charge my 3ds and play it. And I, you can I, hear WarioWare talk. He actually has voiceover. He yeah. gives you all of the instructions and all the tutorials. That's and weird. They're is really it scary? funny. No, it's hilarious. Oh my god, is he, it Charles Martin? It yeah. actually Gosh. works. I don't think it's Charles. No, um, but it's really good. Uh, all of the cutscenes in this game are fully voiced over, so all the characters have voices. Okay, and so you kind of have to play uh, with headphones. Yeah, you, you yeah you totally should if you if you're playing it. Um, oh god, is there and, 3D stuff? No, there's no 3D stuff. Unfortunately, there is. Amiibo 
support, which is really interesting. I haven't had a chance to mess around too much with that. I don't think it's anything major, but it's, you know, just more fan service. This is a boss level. You play the entire first level of Super Mario Bros. like that. Just in, in a weird oh, rotating, man. rotating. That's, from, uh, that's so cool. Wario or Twisted, I yeah. believe. Yeah, yeah. It's from Twisted. It's uh, very so this, cool. This look, it's basically just a big mega collection of some of the best WarioWare games ever, right? And then Essentially. And a ton of new stuff. Yeah. So, so uses the gyro. Yeah, it uses the gyro and the touch screen. and the touch screen, and then also buttons. So there's like mm -hmm. three separate sections. You don't like they don't mix and match. You yeah. just pick a character, Rainbow um, Road, and it'll stay with and you know either the touch screen or the buttons. But some speaking, microphone yeah. games. Ooh. Speaking of those cutscenes, every single cutscene in the game you can actually redub with your own voice <laughs> which Casey and I had a lot of fun doing because um, when we went to go play this uh, a couple weeks ago at Nintendo um, we dubbed over a rap battle so uh, Casey and I had was, a rap battle uh, it was in Wario Push Wario yeah and I'll never <laughs> let that footage out to the public uh, it's dying it's with me it's probably deleted <laughs> we'll find it <laughs> it's horrible it's quiet, find but it's a lot of fun skills. it's very silly it's such a silly crazy insane game but i love everything about it mm -hmm. and i highly highly recommend it this it's there's never been a better reason to bust out your 3ds was yeah. totally off my radar yeah like, i kind of forgot that it was coming out same man i, feel I, I do want it that. on switch but i'll bust out the 3ds so, and i want to say like like kind of how we decided with uh sushi strikers this game is just I feel like it feels better on the 3DS than it would on the Switch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Having such a big screen to try and do those micro games with the touch, like, yeah. I that sounds miserable to me I, and yeah. sounds like it would make the game significantly more difficult as well. Mm -hmm. And the Switch doesn't come with a stylus, and yeah. some of the mini games kind of need that um, preciseness that the stylus gives you. And yeah, I don't think they'd we'll have get a to Switch adjust. Part. They'd have yeah. to rewrite have it to for change Switch things. to be different. Yeah, yeah. it would so, have to be a, a, a touch-only yeah. game on Switch, I believe, yeah. because it's weird with the Joy Cons or non-touch. And I mean, like I could see them coming out. Gyro and stuff. They came out with WarioWare games on the uh, Wii U and the Wii, mm -hmm. and made it for those systems specifically. So yeah. I can definitely see a WarioWare game coming out for Switch, made for Switch, that works really well. But I'm kind of glad they didn't split it like they did before, because I feel like the experience would be better on the 3DS than them trying to port it over. Right, right. Man, yeah, I gotta, I totally got to play this game. <laughs> I don't know why I forgot about it or Thanks. just stopped tracking it, but yep. I'm, I'm all in. Yep. All right, well, this is a great place to take a quick break and uh, swap in our guests coming in from Nykalis. We're going to talk more about Code Princess EX and Blade Strangers, so stick around. We'll be back in five minutes.
And welcome back to part two of Nintendo Voice Chat, where we are joined by... Oh man, here we go. Toshinobu Kondo. That was good. And that was good. <laughs> I'm nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, I have the worst pronunciation with names ever. And Rico Trask. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for joining us. You're here to talk to us a little bit about Code Princess EX and Blade Strangers, two games that you are both working on. That's right. Very, very exciting. So we've prepared a couple questions. Uh, we'd like to go through them with you. Now, Code Princess is releasing on July 31st. It's coming from or to Nintendo Switch. It was originally on 3DS, right? That's correct. Yes. Cool. So I'd love to hear more about what it's like porting games to Nintendo Switch uh, from 3DS specifically. And uh, was it easier than you would uh, expect it? Or is there anything that you didn't expect going into it? ニンテンドスイッチは非常に開発しやすくて、あの、そこは非常に簡単というか、非常にいいハードでした。ただ、え、コードプリンセスは3DSで、うちが専用のこうエンジンで、いろいろ工夫をしてたので、その部分が逆
It's boring Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> Tokyo metropolitan area. <laughs> I've, I've been there. Um, so it's not like you can just walk over to, to Nintendo and say, hey, we need some help with the hardware or anything. <laughs> So um, the beat 'em up genre was incredibly popular in the '90s, um, and you know it's still a pretty popular genre amongst niche audiences these days. Um, so why make a game in this genre now? I know Beruto Scroll up to use on you got. I know Kyujin and they were. I know he's only I know Ninki got at this guy. まあ、それから人気はまあちょっとどんどん減ってきてあのなんでいざっていう時にあのベルトスクローラーを作ろうと思いました。<笑>はい。そのコードプリンセスは 3DS で発売した後、えー、スチームでずっと発売してたんですけど、まあスチームの時にかなりアップグレードをして、でそのユーザーからのそのフィードバックというものを受けて、その、えー、どんどんアップグレードしてたんですけど、そのまあちょっとまだやりきれてない。あのまあ、いろんな声をたくさんまだそのストックがあってでそ,のそういう時に「ブレード・ストレンジャーズ」でまたソランジとかが出るのでこれは「コード・プリンセス」ちょっと注目されるかもなというところでその、まあ、今までのやりきれなかったことを、まあ、全部入れた、まあ、その完璧なものをちょっと出したいなと。思って、まあ、ちょっと、うん、最近あんまりベルトスクロール<笑>あれですけど、まあ、も,うもう出したいっていうそういう思いで、はい、作りました。So, Code of Princess originally came out for the 3DS, and it did, it did eventually have a Steam version as well.、Mm-hmm. And even with those two versions, we still felt that there was a lot of things that we haven't,、uh, we haven't perfected about the game. We haven't finished it yet. <laughs> and、uh, so, well, while we were still thinking this,、uh, we started developing on a game called Blade Strangers. And Blade Strangers has a character called Solange that's pretty much in the lead. And、uh, since Solange is the main character of Code of Princess, we got to thinking, well, why don't we, why don't we use this opportunity to make the best version of Code of Princess?、Mm. And、uh, we took this opportunity. And even though, even though belt scrollers may not be the most popular genre right now, they may、uh, you know, beat, up, beat them ups, we wanted to make one. Uh, did you, was there any kind of classic game that inspired you with,、uh, uh, with Code of Princess in the first place? I mean, when, for, for those who haven't played it, it is, it is you know, a side scrolling kind of beaten up game, but they're, they're kind of、um, they're like these planes that you walk <laughs> in between, right? It's not like,、uh, like Final Fight or something like that. You actually like switch lanes, which I think is really interesting. But w- what were the inspirations for this game? I know, Code of Princess is a very d i f f 影響になったゲームとかありますかあの,<笑>あのもっとちょっと詳しく言ったらあのレールシステムが入ってて、うん、あの普通に左あの左右の動きだけじゃなくてあのレールは、うん、あの変えることはあの割と大事なんで、はいはいはい、それで何かの影響ありましたか<笑>、えっと、自分以外のスタッフが結構あの「ガーディアン・ヒーローズ」っていうゲームを作った。スタッフだったので、まあ、まあいろんな意味で影響があったのかなと思います。<笑>まあ自分自身はまあファイナルファイトとかゼロチームとか、えー、まあちょっとアメリカの人は知らないと思うんですけど、グルメ戦隊バラ野郎とかそういうあのちょっと日本でもそのかなりマニアックなベルトスクロールが好きなんですけど。So with the exception of Mr. Kondo さん。Uh... A lot of the staff for Code of Princess had originally worked on Guardian Heroes in the past,、mm-hmm. and naturally that would lead into influences on Code of Princess. And for, for Kondo san in particular,、uh, a couple of his favorite、uh, beat em ups would be Final Fights, or、uh, this one might not be, I think this one was only released in Japan, but Gurumi Sentai Barayaro, or.、Uh, It, do you know Cho Aniki? Yes. Yeah. I, I believe it was made by the same people as that. Oh,、so、I see. Really yeah, I was cre- thinking, is that a ba- Bun Presto game? Or that, that, <laughs> it's, a while, it's a while ago. Jeez. It, it's really crazy. Yeah.、Uh, that and Zero Team, which、uh-huh. is also super fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah.、Uh, Google Cho Aniki if you want to see weird. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah. Any, anyway, super hardcore, awesome games. Very cool. So, you'd mentioned that Solange is、uh, also one of the leading characters in Blade Strangers as well.、Um, and she's, of course, the lead character in Code of Princess EX. Now, it's very hard to look at Solange and not acknowledge her <laughs> lovely, provocative 
outfit that she's uh, wearing. And I'm just curious, did Nintendo have any issues with, <laughs> with what she was wearing? Um, or were they just, you know, go for it, like, you know, do your thing? Uh, what was their sort of reaction to, to her? I don't know. Solange, do you care about... まあ、ブレイド・ストレインズでもあのコード・オブ・プリンセス EX の主人公にな,りまなっていますが、まあ、見るだけであのちょっと見た目は、まあ、派手というかすごい<笑><笑><笑>なと思いますが<笑>あの特に任天堂側で何か問題ありましたかいや、まあ、3DS の時はそんなに問題にならなかったので、まあ、ちょっとドットがちっちゃいから。なのかなとかまあちょっと不思議に思ってたんですけど、まあ、今日初めてアメリカに来てでちょっとこの収録の前に散歩してたんですけど、うん、ゴアラウンドそしたらあのなんかそソランジュぐらいのもう人がこう<笑>いっぱいしてたんで<笑>あそれで大丈夫なのかなっていう<笑>こんなら大丈夫だなと思いました。<笑> so... Uh, when we originally put out Code of Princess on the 3DS,、mm -hmm. uh, Nintendo didn't have any problem with it at all. But thinking about it, the pixel art was rather small, so it might have been hard to notice a couple of things. <laughs> But、uh, so we had, we, we had a little bit of worries like, is this really going to be okay? And uh, today, uh, Kondo san is coming to America for the first time、mm -hmm. and coming to San Francisco for the first time. And on the way to the office here, There, was, well, there were a few people jogging in about the same outfit that Solange was wearing.、So. <laughs> well, welcome to San Francisco. Yes. So <laughs> if it's here, then it's got to be okay. <laughs> Yeah,、uh, well, Nintendo has changed a lot over the years. They, I mean, if、yes. you remember, and J Japan and US have always been very different. You yeah. Know, if, you, if you go back and look at the Fire Emblem series,、uh, Japan versus the US. In the US, N Nintendo was famous, of course, for、um, you know, censoring Mortal Kombat and replacing blood with sweat and all of that. Yeah. But,、um, but it, it seems like they've changed a lot, huh? Yeah, they're, they're adapting to the new age, it seems like.、Um, so, Blade Strangers,、uh, if you're not aware, it comes out next month, August.、Uh, 28th, and it's sort of a like an epic crossover game with that features like a ton of really popular indie、uh, indie game characters like、uh, Isaac from Binding of Isaac, and Shovel Knight is in it as well.、Mm -hmm. um, the guy from Gun Vault,、uh, yeah, is in it. So, what what was it? What was the process like accumulating all of these characters, like reaching out to other developers? Did you find that they were mostly like interested in in you know、uh, giving you their their character, their IP to work with、uh, for for the game? あのブレイド・ストレインジャーズってあのすごいいろいろなゲームのキャラが生えてるのであのアイザックだったりあのシャブルナイトやガンボルトも生えてるんであの他,の他の会社との相談っていうかあのどうやってこ,このキャラとかどうやって撮ったんですかあのどんな感じでしたかあのあなるほど他の会社はもうなんか張り切ってこのキャラ使っていくださいみたいな感じでしたかあ,あそうですねあのー、ゲームがやっぱ自分もすごいゲームが好きで、まあ、この「ブレード・スレンジャーズ」を作っててでそのやっぱそのなんですかねこう参加してくれるその人たち会社の人たちっていうのはやっぱそのゲーム好きなんだなっていうそのゲームが好きな人たちっていうのがこうなんですかねキャラクターが集まってきたっていう感じはあって。あのうん、そういうやっぱりゲームが好きな気持ちっていうのが非常につなげてくれたかなっていうのとあとやっぱりその一番最初はあの最前線だけであのスタートしたんですけどあのニカリスと一緒にその始めたっていうことによってそれによってそのバーッとこういろんなそのコネクションというか世界が広がったのでそれで本当にどんどんどんどんキャラクターが集まってきてもうなんか本当に考えられないようなキャラクターが集合したゲームになって嬉しいです<笑>。Yeah, so、uh, Kondo san personally loves games, and that, that was the feeling when making this game and when reaching out to other developers. They were other developers who loved games. And if you can have that connection, then it's, I don't want to say easy to use other, other, other、uh, companies' characters, but I think there was a lot of really positive reaction and a lot of positive feedback,、mm. and、uh, things went really smoothly with that. And originally, the game was actually just made by s a i z e n Sen alone. So, it was only using Sizen Sen characters、uh, like uh, Solange. And、uh, 
But working together with Nicholas, then all of a sudden they were able to, well, able to reach out to so many other developers and companies and uh, uh, the roster increased incredibly. So, How big is the roster? So right now there are 14 characters. Nice. Very, very cool. Um, one, one thing that I think is really interesting about your game is that the, you know, the graphics are obviously 2D, but you have a really interesting process for, um, for creating the characters. Can you talk a little bit about that? I mentioned Mortal Kombat. There's actually, a, <laughs> there's actually a, a, you know, some synergies between how the characters are being created, right? <laughs> あの、ブレイドストレンジャーズのアートスタイルについてはあの、ちょっと面白いところと思いますのはあの、もともとは3Dキャラクターを少し2Dの.fにするっていうその技術はスタジオ最前線はもう10年以上前からもういろんなゲ
So when I had first started learning Japanese, I had sent Studio Size and sent an email saying, this is my favorite game ever. Thank you so much for putting this out. And I think I had sent some complaints about, like, please release this game. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, so you did the fan thing. You <laughs> yeah, did, yeah, that's the, the exactly Total fan <laughs> outreach, yeah? Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to see if I could use Japanese. It was terrible Japanese, by the way. And a couple of years had passed, and uh, I wanted to start working in Japan. So I, I moved to Japan, or I went to Japan, and I sent out my resume to everywhere, including Sai Zen Sen, and I just wanted to see what would happen. Mm -hmm. So uh, amazingly enough, I actually got a response, and I was like, wow, maybe if I show up to an interview, I can get a signature. So <laughs> you weren't even considering the job. You just wanted a the, signature. The, uh, I absolutely wanted the job, <laughs> but I, 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 I didn't think it, I didn't think it was possible. I didn't think that this dream could actually come true. So uh, I, I sent in my resume and I showed up to an interview and uh, he actually asked me, so did you actually want a job? <laughs> 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 and uh, I, I got the signature, I got the job, and uh, and being a programmer for the company that made my favorite game of all time is just really cool. That's awesome. That's yeah. super, super cool. What a journey. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. Well, it was an absolute pleasure to have you both on the show. Thank you very much, Mr. Kondo and Rico, for joining us. Blade Strangers is out on July 31st. and I'm sorry, August 28th. Code Princess X EX is out July 31st, both for Nintendo Switch. So make sure you check it out because uh, I've been playing Code, Prince Code of Princess EX, and I'm frankly quite enjoying it quite a bit. Uh, so yes, thank you both very much for joining us. Thank you, thank Pear. You for uh, helping me out here with this. Thank you. And uh, yeah, that's our show this week. We're a weekly show on IGN.com, live every Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time, and upload every Friday on YouTube at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time as well. So with that, we will see you guys next week. Thank Take you. Care. Thank Later. you. Bye.